For cycling fans over a certain age, this bike will almost undoubtedly have at some point been your dream bike, if it's not still today, because this is a classic Colnago C40. But then even more than that, this is a legendary Mappe Team Colnago C40. And if that's not enough still, this is actually the very bike that Johan Museo raced in the Tour of Flanders in the year 2000 and is still in fact owned by the line of Flanders today. Now, what makes a Colnago C40 such a classic bike? It is a good question because when this was introduced to the Pro Peloton in secret back in 1993, it was not the lightest bike out there, although it was super light still, at under a thousand grams for a 54 frame. And it certainly wasn't the first carbon bike out there either, even though there weren't many people riding carbon back then. And neither was it the stiffest, although I can tell you with good authority that this is a super stiff bike. So perhaps the secret then lies in the fact that it is a combination of all three of those things and also Colnago sponsored some of the best pro teams of the era and so this bike won a lot of races. Now the carbon construction of this frame differs quite significantly to most carbon frames today in that instead of coming out of a mold it is still made by hand so carbon tubes are bonded literally glued into carbon lugs so at the head tube here the bottom bracket the seat tube cluster and so what that allows Colnago to do is effectively custom make carbon frames and so this one here Johan Museo's very own bike is custom built to his exact specifications and you can see by eyeballing it that I suspect he's customized a very laid back seat tube there. Unlike carbon bikes of today, there was much less specialization of bikes back in the year 2000. And so the Colnago C40 excelled in both classics and grand tours alike. Although I have it on good authority that the bikes for Paris-Roubaix had quite a lot of extra carbon involved. So the frames weighed 300 grams more. And so I do wonder, given how stiff this bike of Johan Museo's is, whether or not he's actually got a few extra layers of carbon in this layup as well. Now, for many Colnago fans, it would be sacrilege to put anything other than a Campagnolo group set on this frame. And so I'm very pleased to be able to say that this has Shimano Durace. I'm sorry, but the Mappe team used Durace for a long, long time. This is Durace 7700, which actually was launched back in 1996. And then what's on this bike is the 25th anniversary group set, which came out in 1998. And actually, it's almost as long lasting as the frame, which was retired in 2004. This group set was superseded in 2004 as well. The eagle eyed amongst you may well notice two exceptions to that 7700 group set. The first is the cassette, which is actually an eight speed cassette and not the usual nine speed cassette that Museo would have been running at the time. The likelihood is it'd have had an 1123. Then the other one is more interesting. That's the cranks, which are actually Durace 7410, which was the previous iteration of Durace. And we think that the reason they're on here is because Museo, like a number of other riders at the time, was a little bit skeptical about Shimano's Holotech crank technology. And so he elected to stick with the solid previous cranks rather than go for the lighter hollow versions that we now just take for granted. And the other interesting thing about these cranks is the fact they are so long. They're 177.5 millimeters long, which is pretty epic by today's standards. And I guess would have come in handy for levering his way up the Bergs because he's only got a 41 tooth inner chainring on there, making it 41.53 up front. We've also got the old school Shimano SPDR Durace pedals on there as well. Now, wheels on this. Classic bike lovers will rejoice at the Ambrosio Nemesis wheels on there, complete with Durex coating. Yeah, seriously, Durex, it says it on the rim. Now, at that time, all Classics riders were still using the box section aluminium rims. Super comfortable, super durable. And although some riders, Museo himself, had dabbled in deep section aerodynamic wheels quite a long time before this point, these were still the go-to wheel of choice for the Classics. The tyres are also not the exact ones that Museo used in the 2000 Tour of Flanders. On that day, he was using green Vittorias. Here, he's got Vittoria Corsa CXs that are quite a lot narrower than he would have used on the cobbles of Flanders. He'd have gone for 25s, whereas these are probably like 21s. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, 
Goodness me, that is an awfully long stem. You'd be right, because it is. It's 140 millimetres long, which is quite surprising given that it's a fully custom bike. But nevertheless, it's certainly in keeping, and it, especially it being a Conaga own brand stem. The handlebars are ITM, and the seat post, as you can see, is a now little seen Shimano one. Then the other thing, the last thing I'm going to point out for you is this, which is brilliantly retro. It is the wired cycle computer. Johan used a cat eye computer on that, and you can see the wire very neatly tied up next to his brake cable up there. All up then, this is an iconic and quite formidable bike, all capped off by the now legendary MAPE colour scheme. And yes, I definitely was one of those people for whom this was a dream bike if it isn't now actually still. But I was lucky enough to actually ride it. And we have a video that is just up there and you can get through to it with one click. Before you go there though, do make sure you subscribe to GCN. To do it, it's very easy and it's completely free. Just click on the globe. And then to finish off this video, why not watch something about Johan Museo himself, an interview with the very man conducted by Matt. And that is just over there. <laughs>